there's a lot of anti-war sentiment on the campuses. And the students see, saw that one aspect of the whole war was these napalm. Uh, recruiters were coming to campus. Um, I think that the criticism that we infringed upon the liberties of those who wanted to speak to the recruiters is justified. But I think that we have to remember that our country was founded on more than just the guarantee of freedom of speech. It was also founded on the right to life. And if we believe what uh, Senator Kennedy has been saying, there's uh, over 150,000 Vietnamese killed every year, many of them by napalm. So that the students who sat in, it seems to me, set up a hierarchy of values. And they said that the right to life was more important than the right to free speech. At Berkeley, uh, there is a university policy that employers who discriminate cannot recruit on the campus using university facilities. This is a clear infringement of their you know, right of free speech. And yet the faculty, the administration, the students uniformly support this policy. An equivalent policy might be that employers who burn children, for instance, also can't be allowed to recruit on campus. It seems to me that the free speech issue is exactly the same in the two cases. What about the moral and the psychological napalm the whites are dropping on blacks? Yeah. Where has been the student movement across the nation to protest this? I, I think the, the hypocrisy at the University of Illinois is particularly evident where they've had uh, a speaker ban here for several years uh, outlawing the subversive and communist speakers uh, and now they turn around and say that those people who manufacture Dow uh, um, have a right to the campus because the university is neutral. Well, I think uh, most students are trying to show you that you're not neutral by uh, uh, bringing uh, one uh, set of uh, values and ideas onto the campus and not allowing another. Napalm, burying and killing little kids in South Vietnam is a hang up to black people too. But we got another basic problem here in America. Where is the black or the white revolutions on campuses to stop the moral and the physical napalm that you're dropping on black people? Look at the South Carolina massacre. Look at the one they had in Texas Southern University last year. Nobody demonstrated against that, but we had lives to be shared. We had people that died there. But nobody demonstrated against it. But we get hung up and dropping napalm and stuff across the world. This doesn't, this doesn't involve me at all. He told us, get off the wagon. What did you say? Give me that part. I said, when the black student movement finally started discovering the way and the track to work effectively with its own people, called black power. Who told us to sit in on no, that? Hold it. Hold it a sec. Who told you to sit in on that? You want to hear me? And stop that. You want to hear me answer your question? Did, did black do this here? When black you discovered black stop power, brother. Did black tell you to stop traffic hey. in the streets? Hey, you want to hear me or not? When the black movement discovered black power, Stokely stood up and he said, All right, white boys, it's back to your own people. We'll take care of our own. Why don't you see if you can learn to do something effective in your own people? We didn't know how to do anything effective in our own people just as you hadn't known how to do anything effective in your own people. You want a black power now? In the place where we live, the word is student power because the things that most affect us directly in our roles you know, have to do in and around our roles as students, as young people, with the way the war presses on us and presses on you too, dig it. When we strike Harder against Dow on, on campus, it's a strike for you too. That doesn't mean you know, we expect you to keel over with gratitude. But you've got to realize that there are two forces. The white student movement has been going on for the last 10 years. But what you forget to say is that after uh, each group of students go through the university phase four to six years in school, they go out into white middle class society and they don't become, they don't continue the movement. They accept the job, a middle class job, job of Dow, IBM, or any other firm. And then they, these are the people yeah. that perpetuate the system. Well, tell me here, how, where's the violence at? Where's the violence that whites are willing to give to the war in South Vietnam to get the black man free? I haven't seen it. On anymore. the streets of Oakland waiting for the cops to club open our heads. I'm talking about Narty Champagne. I'm talking about I don't come Oakland. from here. Are my people free in Oakland? No, your people aren't free in Oakland. The real point is my people aren't free in Oakland either. Yeah, but you got a better set than I got. You talk about white middle class. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly hey. why we aren't free. Johnson? You talk about white middle class America being a jungle. You, you, know, you talk about it from your point of view. Dig it, man. It what is, is your point of view? None of us know how to. You know, 
kid, first, kids who've grown up in the white movement don't go to work for Dow when they get out of college. They have a lot of trouble figuring out how to move next because nobody knows how to move in adult white middle class America. That's one of the most important That's things. That's not solving our problems, though. Don't tell me about. We've got to work oh. on our problems too. Well, well here, one, you got one problem here, and that's black people. No, black you people got one problem. We got the two, problem, black and white. Okay. Howard Spencer, you've been trying to get in for a minute. You want to get in? No, I just wanted to say it's it's real good that the, that the issue has been brought in like it is because you can't really discuss the whole question of of Dow without realizing that what is some of the fundamental questions about this society. To question Dow's coming on campus really means that you have to question the war in Vietnam and, and the impact Dow and Napalm is making on that. And then you have to go on to see that this society is, is, is founded on the, on the fundamental uh, foundation of racism and exploitation. And black people have been the, mo have been the real victims of that, of that racism. Speaking for black campuses, you know, I mean, I don't want to get involved into any question about whether or not, whether or not a cat has a right to come on campus and recruit black students to come to uh, work for them. They're scared to come in Tougaloo. They sent uh, applications down. They have a very good reason to be scared. <laughs> for the same reason the director of the Selective Service System had to be scared. Black people have been uh, being the, the laborers for this society and being put in slots for this society for too long. Now, as to how white people and white students deal with that on their own campuses is, is their problem. And my, my problem is getting black people to understand that our struggle is related to the whole struggle of really tearing down, destroying the system and building it up. Now, if whites want to do that, good, but they can't tell me how to work on, on black campuses, and I'm really, frankly, not interested in telling them how to do that if they really want to move to destroy it with integrity. But if they just want to intellectualize about it, I don't want to even get involved in that. Uh, a call was put up, work in your own communities. And for many of us uh, who got our start working in the black movement, uh, the realization of working in that movement was what white mass America was all about and a realization that if we wanted to do our part, we had to change fundamental assumptions about mass America. And that means going to the white people, going to the students to create environments in the universities and elsewhere so that they won't, after they leave college, go to work for IBM or for the Dow. But you Chemical haven't done it, though. You, you really haven't done that. You've, you've acknowledged the fact that in 1966, in the summer of 66, Stokely Carmichael said, okay, we don't want you. Go into your ghettos and tell those honkies to stop being racist. To stop, to stop discriminating. Now we give, we tell you again, you know what's coming this summer. So leave these universities each weekend and go home and tell those people to get themselves together. What's going on in the universities of the country, including this one, in a very quiet way because we're behind you, is a struggle for white liberation and student liberation so that we can learn to control our own lives. So don't tell me, and I know some white people who pick it and will pick it all night against the war of South Vietnam, don't give a hang about a black person. See. So don't tell me, don't jump on this black liberation struggle. Here. I ask you one question. I ask all the students in here, I ask the faculty members, where are the universities and the problems in the society here in, the, in dealing with blacks and whites? Where are the students at? You tell me where they are. Don't give me no South Vietnam bag. Don't give me no hang up on no Dow Chemical Company. Tell me what are you doing in your neighborhood here to stop what that old lady is doing against that one who comes in there to work 12 hours for her. I agree with you that there's got to be some basic change in this country. All right, if we're going to okay. talk about it, then let's talk about it. Don't give me any suck and jive because I don't want to hear it. If you're going to talk about joining yourself in a black revolution to overthrow what is wrong here, don't tell me about, you know, when, Stok when Rat told you, when sure. Stokely told you to go back to your neighborhoods, he didn't tell you to go back there and raise hell about something that wasn't even pertinent to the black man's problems. You're right. Somebody asked me, what has the Senate done? It hasn't done a blame thing. And I say that, and I know it. It's irrelevant. What we've got to do is figure out ways as students to be relevant to that machine and to start it. You're right. There's one thing we're fighting, and it's American establishment. That's the only thing. You're fighting it in your way, and I'm fighting it in mine. I was asked to come tonight and, and listen to and participate in a discussion on students and student rights, uh, student problems and student rights. Now, if, if I uh, had been geared to coming to a discussion on black-white relations, the problems of the north end of Champaign, uh, I would have been thinking in the last 24 or 48 hours about an altogether different set of questions, an altogether different set of problems. I don't think that it's I possible to bring together a group of black people tonight and sit them amongst these people as it supposedly uh, was supposed to be done by 
integrating them well into the group and discuss something else. That's totally impossible. Black people to come in and vent a pens of frustration yeah, for people yeah. who are obviously yeah. not oppressing them. Their oppressors are quite obvious, and if they want to take a force against them, I suggest that they go and do that instead of mouthing off against people who spend quite a bit of their lives trying to help what them. What the hell are you it's it's an not, It is an you obvious fact that those people who talk the most when it comes right down to it, that's the actual violence. They're not the ones who do it. You're probably right there. You know. Okay. So that means Governor Wallace, who's running his mouth off, all the white people who are running around this country running their mouth off, who are saying, need us out there now, and there's boys like you who don't know nothing, who ain't never done nothing, and all you want to do is call somebody a nigger, keep them down, and you're going to sit here on your behind and tell me what niggers ought to be doing, and what you know about black people ain't nothing, what you know about white people ain't nothing. So shut you up, because what you know about me ain't nothing. I I think we're uncovering racism in America. <laughs> The fact that this discussion hasn't gotten anywhere is a testament to how deep the problem is, right? right. Now look, you got the university and more broadly you got the educational system. The fact of the matter is quite clearly that this institution, which is the major institution which shapes white America, and I think black America as well, has shown itself absolutely incapable of dealing with the critical social problems we have. I mean, the dam has burst, it's clear. And the university is a useless tool at this point to dam it back up again. And historical judgment has been passed upon the way we conduct education. Well, it seems to me that, that so far we, have, we as students and we as radicals and as protesters have pretty much operated in reaction to what other people have already decided. You know, uh, because because somebody else creates an event like Dow Chemical, we respond to them. And my feeling is that we're that we're constantly being bought off. You know, that we respond to crisis after crisis after crisis, and that we very seldom have a kind of a kind of priority list of what crises we're going to respond to, <coughs> how we're going to deploy our time and our and our what little money we have into into for once shaping some events that were to our advantage. One of the reasons it seems to me that the students are always bought off, and I think you're absolutely right, they are always bought off. It goes back to what Patsy Parker said almost from the beginning when, when uh, Joe asked her, uh, you know, what do the students want? What do they like? And Patsy's comment was, well, for the, for the most part, they're apathetic. They really don't know what they want. There are very few that give a darn about anything. And uh, those who do really don't know what they give a darn about. Now, what do they ask for? You know, what does student power mean? What kind of uh, a real recognition do you want? Uh, well, we want the right to live in the dormitory unmolested. Uh, we want the right to, uh, to uh, uh, you know, entertain our boyfriends un untroubled. We want the right to leave the dormitory and the bedroom room open uh, at least a quarter of an inch or so. Now, one of the reasons you're bought off, because that's a kind of a right that someone can give you so easily. It doesn't mean a thing, in my judgment, as long as you define student power in the terms, one, a symbol, a slogan, which, if it has a program, is a program for freedom in the dormitories, freedom for social events. It's got nothing to do with a program having to do with knowledge, a curriculum, how the university is run. You'll always get bought off. It seems to me that... Um that the basic issue here is how do you make a just society? And it seems to me that all I've heard so far are accusations. You know, you saying that we're guilty and us saying that you're guilty and we all say that the university's guilty and, uh, and it's really not getting us any place. It seems to me that we have to recognize that we're all guilty. You know, and that is just the way it is. What am I guilty and if we say that, you know, then where, then where do we go? If our commonness is that we've been guilty in not creating a just society, then, then, then how do we begin to build it? Let me defend my academic bag for a little bit, because I think it's a pretty a great deal of danger. For one thing, it seems to me what the universities have been able to create that's been valuable has been precisely their value neutrality, has been precisely the extent to which they create a context for criticism, a context for argument, a context for learning, and this has been valuable and it's worked. What Dick said, I'll, I'll support wholeheartedly, namely, when the university gets away from this, moves away from this, starts playing, starts playing a role of picking and choosing a position in society, then we do indeed get into, into danger. I thought that's what the whole Dow Chemical thing was about. Frankly, I think that what you say is so patently absurd on the... Oh, talk. Mr. Johnson? You want to explain why you're doing what you're doing? 
I, you can tell from this where the university and the whole bloody society are going to go. I, the young know it, many of the old do not know it, and that's one thing that accounts for the gap between us, which was evidenced in the question you asked me before they split. Uh, not all of them. One brave man sits there. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know where you are, brother. But, uh, <laughs> wow. Man, your way didn't work. Around you, your cities are starting to crumble because of it, and you're sitting there, and you're telling me, listen to my old man. The second thing is, you actually say, you know, on national television, that you can't conceive of learning occurring in anything other than an authoritarian framework. Yeah. You, There's no, you know... You've translated what I said. <laughs> I, First I, of all, I said that if you wanted to learn political science as a discipline, now and I want to use, learn it only as a tool that to touch the culture. You're probably I going to have to work under a professor who knows the discipline and has been there. I did not say that this covered every field of knowledge or every approach to every human problem. The black students left because they were frustrated, you know, because they wanted to talk about what was immediate and urgent to them, and by them, the white folks wanted to muck around with trivialities. That's one way of handling that problem. I don't know if I agree with it, but I wouldn't put it down because I don't know a better one. When I want to talk about the university, you got two choices. Either the university goes down or it stops, you know, essentially right now, historically speaking, and reconstitutes itself entirely. Even that may not be possible. The university may go down anyway. We don't have a very typical crowd of students here out of the 30,000 of this university. Uh, most of the students are here to get a license to go out and make a good living. And by and large, uh, the university is serving that function uh, of providing them with that license. Uh, according to our system, uh, the, 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 what the system asks for in the way of a license. Now, uh, and most of the students are satisfied with that, and that's why they're really interested more in having girls in the room <clears throat> than in some uh, bigger issues. One of the things that I... I've noticed or I've been thinking about every time I feel that we're talking now this is an issue this is an issue the real point is this um, I feel like it, it's always taken away from me somehow um, it's not relevant to me right now when I leave here tonight um, is this going to change me in any way is this going to make a difference to the people who are listening um, when I would when I would say um, what sorority girls you want to put that context, what sorority girls are going to think of this, or how, how much of this would matter to them, I would say about that much. And I think that even the talk is not listened to by most, and not just sorority girls, every other kind of person here. This group is not at all representative. As the sole remaining black in the room, and may I point out that it is not just coincidental that I am the oldest black who was ever in the room. Uh, I would like to respond to Professor Karsh regarding something that he said from our experience as blacks. You were saying, Sid, that things are a lot better than they were ten years ago, that you can see that there has been change. Sid, to these kids, this doesn't mean anything. They're still here, they're looking at the setup, and it's bad. You know, so don't tell them it's improved, it's still bad. Everything that's been attacked in this discussion has generally been the most progressive elements in this society. Now, I have, they've attempted to kick me out of this university three times for free speech things, so I know how precedent it is. But the university, and American University generally, are just about the only remaining citadels of freedom in the United States. The people who've been called on here to defend themselves by Professor Moneypenny and Karsh and Gusfield are precisely the most progressive and intelligent and humanitarian professors at this university, all right? This to me brings up the problem of the cowardice of intellectuals. We haven't been attacking like things like the Pentagon, like Johnson, and what is really oppressing us, we've been here attacking each other.